So we have the opportunity today to reflect on how it is that God gives each of us a mission in our lives. And based on our gifts and talents, Jesus sends us forth on mission. And the great thing about this is that our mission is beyond us. You know, it's, it, it gets us out of ourselves. So oftentimes we, we kind of are self-centered and we feel sorry for ourselves. Or we look at someone else's mission and wish that we had that mission or that whatever and we become jealous but jesus reminds us that each of us have gifts and talents to be about our mission isn't that great god has blessed each and every one of us with gifts and talents that can make this world a better place and oftentimes we don't see it in ourselves right just like that first reading of amos he didn't think he had any gifts and talents other than to be a dresser of sycamores and to be a shepherd. Yet God was sending him out to make this world a better place, to do the important things, to have the right priorities. He was a prophet and he was to bring that good news, that good news to help others, that good news to be about the mission of God. What an important message uh, for all of us that uh, we are to discern the particularities of each of our mission. But sort of general idea of being on mission is, is constitutive or each of us have that. Each of us have a mission in our lives. And the success of that mission is not our own. In that second reading, it's so beautifully talked about how Jesus, uh, how it is not just our own, but it's, it's the mission of Christ. And it's ultimately God's victory that we celebrate. Not our own victories, and in some ways not our own failures, but we're simply witnesses to Christ who has sent us on mission that God has given us these gifts and talents, and all we can do is what's in front of us. All we can do is, is what we can do, and we strive to do our best. Sort of uh, an enemy of this, or uh, something that works against this sometimes, uh, and this comes about, this sort of story, or this idea uh, came about, as I was watching television, uh, I was watching a, uh, actually a delivery of a baccalaureate address of a young man who just graduated from a great prestigious school, uh, law school, in fact, of Harvard. And he was talking about how um, one time he was uh, watching television and television being uh, sort of this uh, streaming and he saw that there were all these options, right, on Netflix or whatever. He said there were so many options that after an hour, he noticed that he had looked at all these different shows, but he hadn't chosen just one because he had previewed all these different shows, but had not committed to one show. And he said, that's kind of working against us. There's so many options in our lives. There's so many thoughts of what our mission can be or this mission or that mission or what they're doing that we lose that idea of committing to that mission that God has put into our hearts. He didn't quite say that, but uh, I think it's, it's an important sort of parallel or it's something like what we face that the amount of options, the amount of opportunities out there kind of works against that idea of committing to that mission that God has put for us in our life. And we're constantly looking at what we're not watching or what we're not doing instead of being focused on 
on that one mission that God has put in front of us. So how is it that we can refocus our lives every day? How is it that we can allow God to set us free from those that temptation to look at everyone else's mission and not be at peace of who God has made us and what God has sent us forth as? How can we allow God to set us free? Um, before I was a priest, I was a lifeguard and not some, you know, cool lifeguard at the beach. I think it was pretty cool, but I was at a pool and uh, I did that for many years. And um, there's something, of course, you've probably all, we've probably all seen this, but when a lifeguard is going towards a victim uh, is swimming, you don't put your face in the water, you're looking at the victim. You're looking at the mission. There's also um, a, a variety of that where if you're swimming for a long distance, sometimes you've got to put your head underneath the water or else you get too tired. So let's say if you're at a lakefront or a beach and you've got to go a long distance to get to a victim, you'll, have, you'll put your head in the water, but intermediately you'll lift your head up and make sure that you're in line with your victim. And that's sort of like the spiritual life. We've got to put our head down into the midst of life. But every now and again, we've got to pick our head up and make sure we're in line with our mission in life. And then put our head back down. And I think that's prayer. That's what we do on Sundays. As we look at our lives and make sure that we're in line with those uh, with the priorities of Christ in our life, with the priorities that we've, and, and to truly be set free from, from the things that are pulling at us and at our mission. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us ask God to help us to first of all be aware that each of us have a mission, gifts and talents, parts of the puzzle that no one else has. And then to continue to align ourselves with that mission of Jesus, realizing that it's not about us, it's about the mission of Jesus. And that sets us free from feeling sorry for ourselves, sets us free to love and to be committed to the places that God has invited us to be committed to. My dear brothers and sisters, let us allow the Holy Spirit to remind us of our gifts and talents and that we might be that sort of person who helps others to help them to know that they have gifts and talents that the world needs as well that the holy spirit might work through us to inspire and guide them to that awareness as well let us allow god to align us with that mission uh, that each of us are are particularly called to and sort of as a church to be on mission not about ourselves, but about the work that Christ puts into our life every day.